Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Creator Expert Roller Coaster. Now there's a lot to talk about here. I'm going to give you some comparisons for size to show you just how this stacks up to some recent large sets. I'm going to show you the minifigures. I'm going to show you how you can connect power functions to this that are not included in the set to make it run on its own. But let's just start with a demonstration of how it actually works when it's moving. Everything kind of begins and ends right here at the front where you have some hand controls for making things move and you have the queuing lines for where your minifigures would line up to wait for the next coaster to come through. They give you two of these three car little coaster trains. Now these have the the uh, dark azure color on them, you see. And then there's this other one back here, which is on a separate track, a little separate section of track with just the blue color. You can connect these together, but it's really designed to work best with just three in a row. But I'll show you how you can actually switch between the, the train, the little groupings of cars a little bit later on. But yeah, basically your figures come through here. You've got the nice little gates. One figure gets into each. This uses the same system that was introduced last year with the uh, Lego Batman movie Joker Land set. So these relatively new tracks and they've got all the potential sizes and shapes of them that they've made so far are in this set in various ways. They're very smooth and then these little cars, little coaster cars themselves, actually have train wheels on the underside. Let me just very quickly show you that right now so you see what we're dealing with. But we've got, I'll just uh, disconnect these. These can be pulled apart. They hold themselves together pretty well, but this is a special material here. Actually, the outside and the end are both materials that are designed to work together really well to self-lubricate. You don't need to oil this, but it stays moving very, very smoothly. So you get a lot of momentum and it doesn't waste momentum. The system works really well and I will show you uh, presently. But yeah, let's just get right into it before we get into too many of the details. This is a brake which will stop the train when it's coming through. And it also has a turning tire behind there which allows you to advance the the, the current train along. Now it's a little bit rough right there. It has a little bit of, of a bump at each car, but you move it, you move it, and then you do it one last time with this crank right here. You just turn it and the last one will get it going around the corner to set it up for its big rise up the hill. Now this uses a very long length of Lego's smallest chain. There are 203 individual links here that you have to put together one by one, but those extend all the way up to the highest point at the very top. And then there's another system to get it to turn the corner once you're up there. And the chain loops all the way back. So it's a continuous loop all the way down. And you can operate that as well from the other side. There was the second knob you may have seen previously, but I'm just going to use a little, little shortcut here, a little different, uh, different thing that I can turn from this side just to demonstrate how that works. So it's just going to pull all of these cars up and it works pretty well. It actually goes a little bit faster if you're using the proper crank, but I did want to demonstrate it from here. There's no chance of them sliding back, so they are held in place very well. And then once you get to the very top, it transitions to a little bit of a different system. And once it gets to the top, you're no longer powered by the chain link. Instead, you have these rubber tires that are now just moving one car at a time. They're just passing them along and there we go got a little bit stuck there but that's okay there's a little bit of rubber band action that makes sure there's always friction always tension on that and once you get past the third tire here's the second one here's the third one back over here you get past the third one and off you go Now you can make things go much faster using the hand controls. So I'll show you how it really works here. <laughs> so much faster. And it's pretty efficient, pretty smooth, and pretty reliable. Just advance that on and go ahead and take it up one more time. I'll show you some more different features, such as if you want this to just keep going, rather than stopping, you can do multiple laps. 
that's what this arrow represents here. So rather than having that break there that you have to kind of ratchet the thing past, you can push this in, retracts that completely. And I'm just going to do a very quick lap here, run the thing up and around. Now, when the train comes back, it's going to bypass the station and go right back to the lift section. So I can just keep it going. Watch how easy it is to swap to the other set of cars active on the line. You just pull this out, go ahead and advance them, bring your other set in and retract them or kind of park them. For a little more action, you can actually put both of the sets of three cars onto the track at the same time. On the same track, you just want to cue them up. So I'm going to get this one ready, move that back and start elevating the first one up and then the key here is it's all up to the operator you want to advance this one to the lift uh, at, at the time that the other one is basically going around You can get all six cars connected, like I mentioned, though LEGO, I believe, doesn't recommend it, and it makes things just a little bit rough at the top of the lift, but you do need to remove the nose piece from one of these to expose the coupler if you want to connect them together. And put maybe a couple of these pieces back, but you do need to leave a little bit of that open. And then just connect them together. It actually looks really cool going around, but like I said, just at the top, it gets a little bit rough, a little bit notchy. So right there where it's still at the at the tail end still on the chain but then these parts are being pulled through with the tires they want to move at a different rate so it skips just a little bit but then once it goes it goes It pretty much couldn't be any easier to set this up with power functions to put it on a continuous loop. You just need to buy your own battery box and standard M-sized motor and it basically just plugs right in with no modifications required. They also accommodate the boost system, so if you have a boost box and standard motor, you can plug those right in, and they even have a little bracket to hold on to the boost optical sensor, so if you want a sound to play every time the coaster comes by, then you can do that with your tablet. Let's talk about the primary construction here. So obviously there are a ton of two by two by one regular round white bricks. How many exactly? 530 of them in this set. And if you think it's fully repetitive, well, it's not. Like for instance, this beam here is constructed differently from the very next one. If I move to the next one past that on the same row, this one is also different right here. Looks like these two here are the same. I think usually through the build, it was like you build two of the same, sometimes four. I think the most that I ever built the same was six. Possibly there was, there was one design that was done eight times. But you do change back and forth quite a lot. And you don't do too many of them in a row. They switch you back and forth between doing the round posts and doing some of the connector clips. These are removable segments. And in fact, they specifically designed this entire coaster to be split in two. So this is the splitting point right here. You pull apart right here, you snap this out, you snap this out, and then there are a couple others, sorry about the focus there, there are a couple others beyond that would allow you to take the whole thing apart to 
to just split it into two major sections, which makes it a little bit easier. No, a lot easier to move. If you ever do want to move this thing, I highly recommend that you do split it apart. It takes a little extra time, but it is worth it because if something goes wrong while you're moving this, trying to move the whole thing together, it will go very, very, very wrong and uh, it can take a long time to repair. So just take your time, split it apart, and that will help. This sign, well, while, while I'm looking at it, this sign is pretty simple actually, but looks really good. They do include a fair number of these slightly darker than usual pearl gold colored roller skate pieces. There are some on a little kiosk we'll see in a minute. But uh, with all of these, uh, all of these columns, all of these posts that mostly have axles going through them to make them stronger and with all these cross members a lot of them diagonal you know clipped together i expected this to be a very strong structure or stronger than it kind of looks from a distance but it's not it's it's a little bit flimsy everything is ready to move you know ready to come apart a lot of these joints between tracks are very easy to pop up so even if you just kind of shift the thing on a table from one place to another if you hit it if you put in any any weight on one and any of these vertical members you will likely do something like that which can cause a little stopping point or a slowing point for the cars as they go by so every once in a while just push down at each of these joints between multiple track sections and if you see the cars ever hopping or stopping where they don't belong then just check for that Definitely not as strong of a structure as I expected whatsoever, but it does the job as long as you're just kind of leaving everything alone and playing with it as as designed. For little details, there's an automatic camera alongside the longest drop, a little flag in the middle of this 180 degree turn, a tornado or twister sign in the middle of a 720 degree downward spiral, and when you get back up to the top of the lift, you may have noticed the do not stand up sign, which is another sticker with a couple of flags around it. Looking more closely near the starting gate, I did want to point out this technique used for the awning here, which we will also see used in the Ninjago City dock set that's coming up. They just recolored that little shoot piece, which has also been used as a uh, large car wing or as a bulldozer blade in the past. They've recolored it here to dark blue. There's a little control stand with a printed console piece for an employee to operate the coaster. Your little minifig riders are expected to enter from the front left corner of the build with this 45 degree corner build for a ticket booth. The whole thing is attached to the base with just a single stud in the center, but then it's also clipped to the, uh, the corner track up above. They use some 45 degree corner tiles, which are a new piece for 2018 to make that work pretty well. And also in there you see more of the uh, gold roller skate pieces. And then your figures are intended to walk along the dark tan pathway back there. This is not the most camera friendly space to navigate through, but I'll do what I can. It does look nice and the, the path kind of meanders around. You've got some, some plants, there's a little pond down there that looks pretty nice with a little gold statue represented by a nugget in the center of it. This lady is actually walking backwards, but maybe she just wanted to get some juice from the frozen juice stand there, which uses white and the light yellow color. I actually like this, and you can pull this out if you want to use it elsewhere. You just want to see it better. I like the sign up above, and you got a lot of those half round tile pieces used around the edge of the awning got a blender over there just a single sticker on the front looking at that from the outside notice the fence pieces down below use the brick heads square style uh, glasses frame so one piece over here one piece over there nice parts usage but a little bit difficult to see and then i believe this is the first time that lego has officially used this technique to create the look of a tree. So they're using the relatively recent foliage pieces, the leaf pieces, and also the very new flower stem pieces, which have the hollow uh, hole on the top of them so you can stack them more easily. And those are just brown colored down below. And then they use the six stem piece up above, which is done in dark orange. 
Continuing along the interior pedestrian pathway though, just before you get to the stairs to take you up to the ride or the queue for the ride, they've got one of those measurement boards to make sure that you're tall enough to safely ride. There are the stairs going up to the platform and above that is a row of signs showing you a bunch of things that you cannot do or cannot be. Once the ride is complete, you would exit towards the front, take this second staircase back down to the pathway, and that will wind you back out towards the ticket booth, but on the back of the ticket booth is where you can pick up the photo of yourself that was taken by that automatic camera on the big dive. This is another area that's very difficult to get a camera into, but let me pull out those photos so you can see those more closely. These are pretty fun, and each one has just a micro-sized story to tell, and these are based on the figures in this set. At the farthest backmost corner is another pond, and I think this is supposed to be a natural feature, more than man-made. And around the corner from that is a little rest spot with a bench that uses the Cars 3 spoilers for the backrest, and then there's also a map of this park. Notice they only feature this roller coaster, the Ferris wheel, and the carousel, and then an entrance, which I don't know if they're going to make into an actual set, but Fairground Mixer is not included here. There's also one additional tree at this corner with an identical build to the last. And in the background, if you see some strange little orange thing back there, well, looks like somebody's hat flew off. They actually give you a couple pieces underneath to hold that in place. So let's look at the minifigures in this set, starting with the two employee figures here, who interestingly are Lego employees. They don't just look like it from the front, they have the full official Lego employee figure torsos now. Both of them do. This one also has an alternate face. Nothing here, but I guess this theme park was bought out by Lego. It's now a Lego branded theme park, even though there's no other Lego branding in this set, and they haven't used this branding for employees of, of the previous rides, but I guess they've decided to change that, and I'm okay with it, because I really like getting Lego employees in Lego sets, you know, official Lego employee figures. These two here are easily my favorite figures in the set, especially like the hair of the one on the left, and I like the expression of the guy on the right. Uh, he actually has two expressions, so the idea, I believe, is that he could come into the park all confident and just happy to be here. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go on a roller coaster ride. And then once he goes down the main drop, then he gets scared. And I believe he's the guy who loses his orange cap. I'm happy to see the tan wool sweater used again. That one was introduced in the old fishing store. I think that one is just good to occasionally spread through regular unbranded sets like this or non-licensed sets like this. The lady also looks very nice and very uh, springtimey, you know, very colorful. And you get alternate faces for each of these. Here are a couple more riders. Notice the torso on the left is not the light blue or light royal blue, I think, colored uh, torso that's been around for a long time for female figures. It's a relatively recent one there. Good to see new stuff coming into circulation. Relatively simple prints from the back. Of course, the one on the right is Mr. Cool Guy himself. He doesn't even have an alternate expression. He just always looks exactly the same as we saw in the photograph that was taken of him as he went down the scariest part of the ride. We're still going. Still more figures to see here. Two very happy patrons. Another short hair application on a female figure. Good to see just for the sake of variety. Of course, the guy on the right there is going to have to leave his camera behind before he goes on the ride. But he does eventually go on the ride because he has this alternate face. So he doesn't fare all too well. And we see his picture taken like that. And this lady has a, a napping or just uh, enjoying the sunshine and fresh air kind of alternate face. So that's a useful one for just hanging out on the bench over on the corner of the build or maybe around the fountain in the center pathway. I saved this one for last for a handful of reasons. First of all, this is the only child-sized figure in this set with a child-style face and the short legs there in medium blue. A relatively uncommon torso used there, but 
because of her height, unfortunately, she will not be able to take the ride. You know, it's strange to see no kids or, or a minimum number, in this case, just one kid in a set like this that's all about fun, but she's not able to go on the ride, unfortunately. So only one. But also, she has the cotton candy there, which is just a fantastic build. It's just the beehive piece upside down, and then has a an unprinted minifig head stuck in the top of it. And those are just kind of connected together, and it all just looks absolutely perfect to me. Well, where does she get the cotton candy from? The cotton candy stand, of course, if you're waiting for this. No, nope, I didn't forget about it. It's just the one fully separate build that's not attached to the set at all. You can uh, place it in the inner pathway, but it's best used around the periphery, like outside the main entranceway. A nice little build using the wheelchair wheels there. You have a 2 by 3 tile on the front with that one sticker, which looks really good. They got the little umbrella up above, a uh, little uh, a keypad. Uh, I don't know if that's for reading off a token or a ticket, a pass or something, or if it's just intended to be a card reader. It might just be a card reader, although uh, they only include real money in the set, no credit cards. But, you know, got the little, little spinner there, spinner drum. Has a few studs in it. You can open that up as well. And it comes with a second cotton candy piece. So you can dole that out or just use it as a sample. And they've got just the thermometer on the side to make sure the sugar is coming out at just the right temperature to give you that nice fluff. The overall size of this monstrosity is 100 studs the long way. So just over three base plates in length and it's one and one half base plates deep or 48 studs. Honestly, I've been kind of dreading this part of the video, these size comparisons, because it requires moving some pretty large things around, some of which were in my city or on display various places. But hopefully this will prove useful to some of you. So if you own any of these compared products or if you're familiar with their sizes in general, then you'll get an idea of just how big the Creator Expert roller coaster really is. I've tried to arrange the comparison objects such that their center lines are all the same. So you see the same average distance to the camera. Hopefully that's the most fair way to look at it from one angle. But I'm giving you enough different examples to hopefully bypass any form of doubt. Needless to say, I feel the volume of stuff with this set is very good. Even though it is a skeletal build, you get something that is pretty massive and most of its space is used and is there for a purpose. The price to part ratio on this set looks very good on the surface and I think it continues to look good once you look at the specific parts. There are 203 of those little black chain link pieces but they are offset by quite a large number of very large and specialized and valuable track pieces as well as the cars. And I mean, you saw how this set just dwarfs the $500 Death Star. The set is about as good as I could have asked in its default build. Uh, the only thing that I actually haven't mentioned up to this point that I wish was better is rebuildability. Uh, there's a lot of very, very specific and complex Lego arithmetic that's done to make every single strut uh, just end up in the correct place and to have good structural stability or enough structural stability, even if it isn't great, but you know enough to keep things mostly in place as long as you don't try to move the entire structure somewhere else. But it would have been nice to have like an easy rebuild to put this into a different configuration. Because I want to be able to play with that track, you know, really do the Lego thing with the coaster parts. And there is some of that that's possible with this set, with just the parts included, I'm sure. But if you want to make something that is this sturdy and a completely different layout, you're most likely going to have to add your own pieces. I feel like this was a long enough video though, you're probably getting tired of listening to me, so I will move on and I will thank you for making it through this far. I hope that you've enjoyed this look at this pretty impressive set and if you have any thoughts about it that you would like to share with myself and the rest of the viewers, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And I will talk to you again very soon because my next video is on the way.